Okay, so how are you feeling this Sunday, bro? Feeling good, bro. I was excited all week to be in this show, man, because, uh, you know, some things you have to say because some people like to understand, uh, you know, because we are all like human beings and we just have to like share our things. And uh, some people learn from it and some people share their own things as well. So I believe it's very good. For your fans that don't really know you, that are watching you all over the world, who is Alassane Crespo Kamara? Okay. Um, Alassane Crespo Kamara is a football player that played um, at the Swamp Sega Lunes for eight years of age. Um, Living in Amsterdam, played in Panama. And um, you can say, like, um, I'm just a normal person and a football player, but uh, I'm much of a person than a football player. Nice, 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 nice. So, uh, tell us, how was it like growing up in uh, Celerion? Yeah, growing up uh, in my own country, Celerion is very, very much, uh, as everyone knows, that's from Africa. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very much difficult because it's much more competition. Uh, so, take yourself outside um, Celerion or Africa as well, uh, to come to you want to start your football career especially when you're young. There are many young and very, very good talents. So I can say I was not good, but um, I had a mentality when I was young. I said, that no matter what, I'm going to play professional football. I'm going to come to the promise that I don't even know what uh, Sweden was and how Sweden was, or I just have a thought that um, I'm going to work at double as hard as everyone, uh, as much as hard as everyone in my age, and um, I'm going to be competition for the next uh, player beside me, and I'm going to do as much as possible to take myself out from Sierra Leone so I can play professional football in the promised land, especially for my family, for me and the people around me. So that's the thing that, um, that keeps me motivated because it was hard, it was difficult, much more competition, but uh, there are things around me that keep me motivated. Wow. Wow, wow. I guess um, you were really happy uh, the first day you came to Sweden or you had your contract. Um, what was the challenges you faced as a teenager in Celerion? Um, some of the challenges is that, uh, you know, when you're growing up as a teenager in Africa, people prioritize like school, you know. And uh, when you're playing football, it's a game that everyone thought like, Football is just something that you play for fun. It doesn't matter how much you, you're good or how good you are in Sierra Leone or in Africa as so, uh, People think that uh, there is nothing for footballers there. And uh, the only thing that you can do is that the things that you create a job opportunity. And uh, football is just like for idols, you know. Uh, so that's one of the challenges and uh, some of the challenges were like uh, to get like food, uh, the area where I grew up to like, uh, there is no scouts or any like uh, good football playing in that area where I was the East. So it's much, I have to move away from my uh, my community to play in the West part of Freetown where I came from. So uh, that's where I get like much more opportunity to play for the 17 FC Calon and etc. Et wow, wow. So you have to leave your parents and then you moved to Freetown. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. And um you played for FC Calon, like you said. Yeah. Now it's a club owned by a former Inter Milan player. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When you had the chance to join FC Calon as a teenager, as a kid, how happy were you to be playing for a club that is owned by an Inter Milan player who is such a big player in Celerio? Um Actually, it was, it was actually a long journey because um, I started playing senior football and everything just went like so fast because when I started to play football, as I say, I was not the best player. I was not a better player at all. I, I just had like a mentality that you work hard and you get your result. And I had my goal, since I, even if when I was young, I had my goal and I decided like, I'm gonna work through my goal and one day I'm gonna achieve this. And my goal was to play professional football. It doesn't matter which goal I took. My goal and my aim was to play professional football at the end of the day. 
And um, the reason why I even have that goal is because uh, when Mohamed Kalon was playing for Inter Milan, when mm-hmm. he was like coming down home for national team, uh, he was like a role model. Everyone wants to be like Mohamed Kalon. Everyone wants to play in Europe. So, so that's the thing that keeps us motivated. And uh, after I moved from uh, my home, I started to play junior football. And I played in one of the biggest teams beside FC Kalon. That's the, the team where I started. Uh, it's called Mighty Blackpool. And I played in Mighty Blackpool for six months. And our our first Premier League game in Sierra Leone was against FC Calon. And that was that was their that was their last game because they normally go to this uh, tournament in Italy, via Reggio. So they normally go there like two weeks every year. And that's where like they took like three staff from FC Calon that's played in San Milan as well. And uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So this is a good way to establish young talent in Sierra, from Sierra Leone to FC Calon. So I decided that I want to play professional football, and the only way I can do this is to create a way for myself by by scoring against FC Calon, so they can take me, so I can be part of their squad the next year. So as it went as planned, I scored against FC Calon. The game was like one zero for us. And uh, Mohamed Kalon took me and said that this player is going to be a one day. And um, I was in Italy with his, uh, uh, with his team. And uh, it was 2010, we were in Bialeggio, me and Haji Kamara as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm uh, in Europe right now. And um, after that, he went back to Sierra Leone. I was posted by Hafid Mok. And he says that I um, uh, wanted to go to Sweden. So that's how my journey begins. Wow, wow. Playing against FC Cologne, you wanted to join the team and you had to score against them. And yeah. one of the, should I say one of the successful players in Celerion? Yeah, Cologne? I can say Cologne is one of the, success, the most successful players in Sierra Leone we have had uh, on the, our generation because uh, we have been more than, I can say, any other footballer from Sierra Leone. Wow. In uh, July 2011, you joined Borden in Sweden. That was your first professional uh, club, right? Yeah. yeah. When you were coming to Sweden, what was going into your head? Like, how happy were you to, to, to come to Sweden? Actually, um, I can't even think. I, if I can remember, I was not happy at all. Uh, I had only this one goal was to stay in Sweden. And by then, we were five, we were five, of, five of us that had a visa from Nigeria to come to Sweden. We came through like a long deal. It was like three months long from August to October. And I came to Budapest, and some other players came to Estona City, some in Kalma, and some even in Ugodin in the beginning. And um, after three months, they're going to decide if we're going to stay or we're going to go back to Sierra Leone. So I came with the purpose of not going back to Sierra Leone without a professional contract. And by then, Budem was in Division 1. So I came to Budem with a thought that I'm going to come here. It doesn't matter how cold it is. It doesn't matter what are the challenges. I'm going to play here. And then before I went back to Sierra Leone for holiday, I'm going to get a professional contract before I go back to Sierra Leone. And we were six of us by then, and I was the only one that gets professional contracts from AI Pro after three months in Bodem. Wow, wow. You had the goal of uh, staying in Sweden, and um, you scored six goals in 10 matches for Bodem. Yeah. And you moved to AIK, like yeah. AIKO, yeah. one of the biggest teams in, uh, in Sweden, yeah. in Stockholm, right? Yeah. So when like the contract came that Aiko wanted to sign you, what was the feeling like? Actually, it's, it's quite dramatic because uh, I was not actually meant to sign for AIK because um, I played against uh, six games and my next game was supposed to be against uh, Vastalud. No, not Vastalud, sorry. Uh, Calsta, Calsta United. Calsta. Okay, okay. 
And I went to Kansas. We played our way game, and by then our coach was from Orobudo. So we played an away game against Tanstad, mm. and I was sitting with the coach, our coach, he's from Ogobu, and he told me, uh, listen, you have played this game, and uh, Ogobu was, uh, Ogobu scout was like, uh, in the game. So, okay. uh, Ogobu, I tested a new coming there for like two days, a uh, one week So I came to Ogobu again, I was there for like three or four days. Mm -hmm. And after that, he said, okay, yeah, we, we're interested to sign him. But now he just needs to go back to, to go then, continue the season, and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, on my way um, from, from, uh, from Olobu, we went, me and my agent, back in, we went to Alana Airport, and that's where I met the AIK uh, sport director and the AIK, uh, yeah, the AIK people. Okay. So they said that we are interested in Tesco and we're interested to make a contract. So that's where I'll make a contract and I signed for AIK. Wow. So I was, so, it was, I was not, ex I was, I, I was not, I was not even expecting that it was like following me all my family my, when I was a good head. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, it was just like very dramatic and I'd not, everything just happened so fast. I did not even have time to think about it. And I just went so fast. I was really happy as well because that was my dream. Wow, wow. Iko Iko did the first one on Ori, bro. Exactly. <laughs> to, just, <laughs> to just like get you from there. Wow, yeah. wow. And when you moved to Iko, right, yeah. as a teenager, how was the facility and the quality? like compared to Bowden when you were in the Division 1 team? Of course, the, it's, everything was like, it's football, all, everything, football is the same. The football that people play here, football that people play, no, play the same. But the quality, the intensity, and all everything around the football club, these are the things that make the difference, you know. And the players, they are willing to like uh, succeed, to win games, and those are the things. And of course, you can find a player that's played in Division One that have exactly the same quality than that the, uh, with the player that's played in the uh, Stansa or the yeah. league. But this player just need a chance to like prove that he has this quality. And um, when I came to AIK, I had like so much expectation because uh, the the Bangalore's board had just succeeded in that team, and I had so much big expectation from the coach, the fans, and even my agents or people around me that um, I need to succeed. And by then, I just like scored like six goals in 10 games mm -hmm. in, uh, in Bowdoin. So mm -hmm. people were like expecting so much of me. And by then, I was just 18. And when I came to AIK, I can just say it's the wrong time. And it was the wrong time of my career that I came to the club. And um, I was expecting so much of myself. I just like football. As an identity, identity, I just want to like perform, 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 and everything just like went so like fast. I could not perform because I had so much pressure. At the same time, I had pressure on myself as well. I need to perform because there are things outside football that affect it as well. That uh, the language, in, it's integration, and I was just by then like eighteen, and I came to Sweden like uh, three months. So I, mean, I did not have time to adapt. So that was the reason why I think like everything did not go as well when I was in AIK. In AIK. Okay, okay. You mentioned the Bangura brothers or the Bangura friends, which is Tete yeah. Bangura and Mohamed Bangura. Yeah. Would you say they paved the way for Silurian players in Sweden? Uh, actually, when people, when people think they don't, they don't even look back on where things started because sometimes you have to like look at when things started, people just see their journey from AIK and everything just went like blowing out. But mm -hmm. people don't understand it came, for example, uh, how many came for Sopadamo and people came to uh, Shopping and they play like some of one of them in Division 2 and the other play in Division 1. And that's where they like integrate both in the football field and outside the football field. And that is the thing, that's the reason why it's made it was like very much easier for them to came to like AIK and like uh, explore so. So yeah, they did, they, they did, but um, people did not see the, the journey and the things that was important outside football because for us African footballers, 
in general, if you have to have a club that gives you time to integrate, because something like football is just about performance in the pitch. There are people behind these football players, and this is the thing that most of the big clubs want to see is that they need players need time to integrate to, to perform better. Because the more you integrate, the more you learn about life and culture outside football, the better you can perform, and the much more easier it can be for you to like, uh, be a professional footballer in the pitch by learning things outside the pitch. Wow, wow! If it's like you've actually made people know what the Bangures brother have done for Celerion here in, in, in Sweden for other Celerion players to get the chance to showcase their talent and I think till now I think Celerion players are one of the I would say when you look back you see what you lot have done like you're doing very very good and you like you are still doing great everywhere you go in the club you see like a whole lot of celeron players and stuff so big up to Mohamed bangura and tete bangura if they are they are watching or they're gonna watch later um you you are a vegan right yeah <laughs> how did that come about like what 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 don't you eat and what do you eat I don't say anything from except for animal. What you saw? You don't eat from anything. Animal. Yeah, except for animal. How? Because it's for me, it's healthy. I feel good in my body. Uh, I have much more energy, and it helps me a lot with my recovery, and uh, it helps to build muscle for me much more easier. I don't have inflammation in my body. And it feels good as well as my stomach because it's it gives me things that I've not seen before. And it helps so much with my sleep, waking up very healthy and much more energetic, going to bed, feeling that I'm like recovering faster and all this. So it feels very good. Wow. So so like you don't eat meat, chicken, all this <laughs> stuff? Not even. Interesting, interesting. Wow, 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 wow. I think um, you should actually educate us footballers on this because I don't see many footballers that are vegan. Yeah, it's for me, I can say it's much more like individual. You know? um, it's how you feel, you know, every every other football player has a different type of body. And my body suits it and I feel that it fits me a lot. Maybe it doesn't fit the next person or the next person, but it suits me a lot. And I believe that, of course, if someone wants to try, of course, it's a good way to try. But if you have a way that works for you, that you with your performance or recovery, I believe it's best to stick with it. Because um, to, like, mix things that you're not used to and get it. Uh, to be able to perform as an all with that, it's going to be very, very tough. So, if you have something that you believe it suits you and it fits your performance, you perform better, you recover better, I believe it's better to stick with it. Because everyone, every other body is different. No one has the same body, the way they recover, and uh, the way they build muscle or they build uh, their body for recovery and performance. Wow, wow. Hey guys, uh, if you just tune in, we are talking to Alassan Crespo Camara, who is from Celerion. And uh, please let us know if you can hear us well and you can see us clearly as well, because I just saw somebody saying uh, I can't see his face well. So please let us know if you can hear us clearly. Um, please, I want us to talk about your book. I think last year or two years ago, you decided to write a book which was all over Sweden, like all over Sweden and probably all over the world as well. Um, the name of the book is A Journey in the Spirit of Football. Yeah, it's like, I don't know how to translate it in English. Mm -hmm. I think my Swedish is much more better than my English now. Than your English. <laughs> it's great. But anyway, it's, it's called NASI Football Tekken. Uh, it's like 
a journey in, in football. I don't know exactly the direct translation, but it's, it's a, a journey of football, you can say. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was the book. That was the name of the book. Please, um, what inspired you to write this book? What inspired you to write this book? And um, how did you come out with this? Because this is such a big thing for me and uh, for the listeners. Somebody just wrote, how can we get it, please? Um, I'm going to post the book after this show. I'm going to post the book, the link, and you can inbox Crespo Camara. He is going to let you know how you're going to get the book. Yeah, I'll, I'll post the link in my video because it's much, it's like in ebook. And it's also a hard copy. Uh, it's on a degree, it's on a book as well. Uh, but if you want a hard copy, you can buy it on book and a degree. And also, it's also uh, on the uh, next story uh, if you want an ebook as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I was and... coming to my question that what inspired you to write such a great book? Um, yeah, like I said, we are football players. But if, if you said, tell it, I'm um, tell it. And the people that know you, your life in Sweden, tell it is a football player that's played in position, is a midfielder and blah, blah, blah. But they will not mention a single thing about your life. The footballer is people, this is the thing that people know. But where a footballer that you are living as an identical footballer, but there are things outside football that people don't know about it. And sometimes when you tell people about your life, people get to know you in a whole different way. And that was my, that was my goal because we came here in Sweden to be able to succeed and play professional football. Every one of us, we have a different background. And if you explain about your background to someone, the person will see you in a whole different way than just a football player. And mm -hmm. all, we all have a different background, both difficult and, uh, to come here and just like be a professional footballer. So that was my aim. Actually, when I was in your 2015, uh, I decided to do like presentation in like uh, schools, uh, high schools in our group. And I start with it by just like um, explaining about like integration, how difficult it is to like integrate as a footballer, as a non-footballer, but as a whole to integrate in Sweden or integrate in Europe to like start to like the language and start to like understand the culture and how people live here in general. So, and also because I was talking to like people that came from Sweden, from Iraq uh, and all this, so like everyone have a different background. So I was like just talking in general in this school and doing like one time a month this about culture and integration. And um, and when I finished my presentation about my journey in Sierra Leone and all that, and the headmaster in the school decided that this is a very good story for people to know about because now we get to know you not just as a footballer, but we get to understand like the things that you guys, the challenges that you guys really went go through when you come here as a footballer because people don't understand. You give us key and a bicycle with so apartment and decide to and they let us perform better, but you don't understand that by giving us a key and an apartment and, and uh, a bicycle, that's not the key to like perform better. There are people that need courage to like speak to you so you can perform better in the football pitch. And um, so when I started like, talk about that also, it catch the attention of like many, many uh, schools, many people that deal with culture and integration. So that's, that's how the, uh, the book Wow, wow. This, this is very great and it's, it's actually a motivation to, to everyone. Yeah, to because that, that's the thing, actually, because when I came to, for example, when I came to AIK, um, I had like a bill, you know, this, uh, I have to pay like a telephone bill. I don't know, you know, in Africa, we don't have a paper home to pay a telephone bill. You buy mm -hmm. credit, scratch it, and you make a call. So, so when I came to AIK, I had like a telephone bill in my mailbox. I went out and opened it and said, oh, the right answer. I know I was in Swedish, but 
So what I did, I thought someone sent me a paper which I can write my autograph. So I sent my autograph and posted it back because I thought like. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you turned the bill. The bill was to sign your autograph and send it. <laughs> so I sent my autograph and I sent wow. it back to to the company. You know, so these are the thing. This is just a living proof that there are people that came to Sweden for the first time to know the language. There are things outside football that people need help for, so they can have good performance in the pitch. So, yeah. Wow! Wow! Your in AIK, you were sent on loan to Oribro, yeah, a club that was meant to sign you first before yeah. I could did them one, you know. Yeah. And you actually did very good. They signed you permanent deal. Yeah. How relaxed were you in Oribro compared to I could? Actually, I was not relaxed at, like, relaxed at all because as in, like, I mean, the the pressure. You know, when you went to Ico, you yeah. scored six goals, yeah. a big move to one of the biggest team in Sweden. Yeah. Everybody, just like you said from the beginning, everybody was expecting something big yeah. from you. You know, yeah. but when you went to Oribro, like, was it the same big pressure, or it was kind of like, okay, now you can, like, be yourself. It's actually both. It's a pleasure, but like I said, you need integration. You need people that know how to deal with the, the person outside, behind the football player. So when I came to to AIK, uh, so when I came to Liverpool, I met a guy there that changed my perspective of life as a football player, and he understand because he have had like uh, many African player before, players before. And uh, he even have like uh, Robin Ayana and guys and all this. There are like many, many African players, well as well as Brazilian players. So he knew he knew that when I came to Ebu, I wanted to show him that I came from AIK, that I'm good enough to play. So what he did, he just put me down and told me to like put all everything to a break. And he did like things outside football. He made me start to learn. That to enjoy football. He says that try to laugh, even if it's not there, try to laugh, create a smile, make yourself happy. And he starts to ask me about things that is not that not even concerned football. So it starts that's that's when my perspective starts to like change. I start to think like I have someone here that care about me. So in return I want to like give him something like my performing better for him. Wow. And uh, whenever I came to see him, we sit like 20, 30 minutes, we talk about like, family life in Sierra Leone and all this. We also like create like jokes. and So it makes me, when I go to the pitch, I don't think to perform. I just like, enjoy it because it makes me understand that football is not just a football. You have to enjoy it because that's the reason why we start to play football in the year because it was fun. So... And suddenly, I just like start to score goals from nowhere and start to like score different goals and all that. And he asked, they, they asked in the newspaper, what, what did you do to Facebook that, uh, that make him start to score goals? Because he came to Eric, he was there for like a couple of months, he's not scoring any goals. And they asked him, what did you do? Then he said, we just sit. He said, he just laughed and said, we just sit and talk. Just that. And that's the thing that changed everything because we just see. And we just spoke. We did not spoke about anything different. We just like talk about life in general and all of that. And uh, it changed my it changed my way of seeing life. It changed my way of playing and all that. And uh, up to now, I'm still having him as a player. So I can say some of the things that those are the small small things that can change a player career. Wow! Wow! I guess he actually helped you to get back to your yourself and like uh, be able to play very well every single game. Now your goals, you were talking about your goals. I know you've scored some crazy goals in Sweden, yeah. like some crazy goals for for Oribro, for Hecken who come there. Yeah. In I think that was in 2015, 16. You mm, scored. 14. You scored. 
14 goals. 14 right? Goals. Yeah, yeah. You score 14 goals right after coming back from injury. Like yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. How, like, how did you do that? Like coming back from a serious injury yeah. and then you scored 14 goals for yeah. Oregon. It was crazy. Like, I think everyone in Sweden was surprised. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, um, by the time when I came from injury, I was like, I came back from injury. I wanted to like perform so badly. I wanted to show that oh, I am good enough. I am blah blah. blah. I can score goals. The guy just looked at me and put me back to the bench, and he starts to do like crazy things to me. Like he puts me like I'm telling you, he was standing on the goal line with no goalkeeper, was passing me the ball. In like I was six yards away from him, and said that he passed the ball in the goal line, six yards without no goalkeeper. I said that you don't need a goalkeeper to score goal. I was I was so mad at him. I was so crazy. I was so impatient. I just want to come back and play the games and score goals, and he just put me to the goal line, and I said I just passed the ball without no goalkeeper. I do that for like six months. And I play like before start to before starting to score. I play like almost eight nine games without scoring any goal. But guess what? I was still the player that he believed that I am, and I was still continue. I was still like the player that continued to start every game until suddenly everything just started like, to change, and I start to score every other game, goals every other game until like fourteen games and fourteen goals. So. That was it. Wow, wow. And right after the season as well, there was a whole lot, whole lot of uh, rumors. Malaga was interested, other like top leagues in uh, France, in uh, Spain, top league. Malaga was playing in La Liga by then. Yeah. Would you say you were a little bit disappointed you did not get the move you wanted? Of course, you know, like I said, like when you're young, you you. Everyone, every one of us is going to like play. Like, you, if you play, for example, in this level, you want to go to the next level. Every other footballer is like that. And of course, I was disappointed because I feel that I was like in form. I feel that I was ready to move. I feel that uh, I've done everything that I'm supposed to do in our stance team. And I feel that this is my time to like just move to a bigger league and start to like build up my career from there. Uh, but suddenly, I even went to Malaga. I was like watching their game against Real Sociedad, and everything was like done. And um, and after two weeks, I went back to go for them to like continue the deal and uh, finish the deal. And uh, suddenly, Robo asked for much more money that uh, they demand for much more money uh, because by then, my new sell is at selling. For 60 million, and by the end, the people of Robo said you score more goals than this afternoon, uh, so we, we're gonna demand more because we think by then you're better striker than this afternoon. So, if Manu can sell this afternoon for 60 million, we can sell it for even more. So, that's the thing that stopped the deal by then. Okay, so it's just about them trying to compare or comparing your price tag to Isaac. yeah. Yeah, and after two months, after two months, we play a sweet cup game, and uh, I get injured. So I was out for one year. So after that, yeah. Wow. You were out for one year? Yeah. After losing a deal to Malaga? Yeah. Wow. What, what was going through your head when the deal yeah. went off? And you got injured for a year. How, how did how did you manage to 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 face that or to get through it? It's just like for me, I just believe that everything happened for a reason. When something happened, it's because of something. And I believe that if I did not go to Malaga or to any other club by then, it's because I was not destined to. And for me, I believe when you work hard, you the results that you destined to. We come to you. You don't need to go for it. Because for me, there's luck. There are things happen because people, you meet the right people, you get lucky and all this. But every single thing that happened 
it's because of what you've done, your destiny will come to you. And for me, everything just happened for a reason. I know deal not, did not happen because it was not meant to happen. And by then, I just did, I was in a robo. I was doing my rehab every day. I was not supposed to jog. I was not supposed to do anything that, because I had like a stress factor in my uh, right shin. I had a hole in my, in my bone by then. And I was out like, the doctor said I was not supposed to jog, not even run, nothing for one year. And what I, the only thing I did was run in a swimming pool and was bicycling for one year. So I was waking up the same time every day and do like two times a day every day for one year. Wow. Wow. And what, what sort of injury was it that you, you it's called, had? It's called like stress fracture. I don't think it's normal at all in football because by then when I was in the I was like running a lot. So uh, I got a hole in my shin just, oh, yeah, just under my, uh, my knee. So it's like a sh where I put the shin pad. It's like a hole there. So, and that hole is not something that they can't do operation. They have to like heal. And you can't jog with it, you can't run with it, you can't do anything. You just have to wait for the pain. And I was waiting like one year for that to heal. Wow, 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 wow. One year without football. Which just for me, not without football. Not without jogging, not jogging not nothing. Yeah, just. Nothing. Did you get to a point that you were fed up? Like, of, of course not. I was like enjoying it. I was going to the gym. I was like doing all the things. It makes me understand football. It makes me understand my body in a whole different way. It makes me understand life in general in a whole different way. It gives me the possibilities to write the book. As I was saying, this is the time I decided to write the book. It gave me the possibilities for people to know about me in a whole different way. And like I said, everything happened for a reason, you know. And uh, the things that I lose by then gives me another opportunity. It gives me like things that I'm like thankful for today that I have gained. So of course it stopped me from being what I want to be. It stopped me from getting the country I want to get. But like I said, I get things that I could not even imagine myself getting today. Wow. 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 This is crazy. This is so interesting. Please, I want to take you back um during the ebola time right that yeah. week was uh so crazy in celerion yeah. right and you decided to actually come up with a charity work yeah to help people back in uh celerion whilst you are doing that you were also busy playing football playing games yeah like as a person as you are, how happy were you to be able to help your people in that period? Um, yeah, this this is the period, like I said, where um, where I was uh, I was doing like creating my football. This two thousand fourteen, where I came from in day, mm. and um, I was not the only one that was like going through that. Like I was just thinking like. Every other Sierra Leonean, every other like African people that are going through that from Guinea, Liberia, Sierra Leone. It was like <clears throat> it was very tough. It was very very tough. I could not even imagine going through that again because this is a time where I like uh, come back from injury and uh, start to play my games and like having of course high expectation for myself to perform directly. And at the same time, I was like for every single day that go after. I was like, directly when I came to the locker room after games or after training, I had to like check my phone if I had like uh, a message or please call that someone that uh, that I know have got able or died. So that's the pleasure that uh, I was on throughout that season. And uh, like I said, after when I get the, the injury in my shin, uh, when I was supposed to be out for one year, and that's when I decided to like start this project and this organization people are offer. And uh, like I said, like things happen for a reason. If I couldn't have been like if, if I couldn't have that if I'd not had that injury, I wouldn't have been able to like help the way I did. And uh, if I was like say for example having this contract in Malaga or somewhere else, there is no way possible I'll have time to do all I did for people that really needed it. 
and uh, of course it takes my time but at the end of the result it gave it gave tremendous good result and i'm really happy to that and up to now there are people that have gained from that project that's uh, yeah, that's really thankful today and i'm also thankful that i have the time to do it so yeah why wow, just a great fan everyone was very supportive and uh, you did like one of the best guides like to people out there and i know and believe people out there really really appreciate it and you're going to end up as one of the legends in Sweden here in Celerion based on what you do aside football um can you please tell us how happy were you when you had your first national call up in 2012 it was in um, a world cup qualify yeah how was it when you felt like oh i'm going to represent my country it was great because that was always my dream to play for national team how big or small which competition it doesn't matter but to represent my country and when it was the kid i was like sneaking in the stadium like in the bus is like what's like like of any of the money alone and the big stars that we had there and uh, it was always my dream to like start in the middle of the stadium playing for my supporters playing for my country playing for my uh, clan it was it was something it's one of, that was one of the biggest things that I've really done for my country to play for the people representing the people fight for them play for them so it was it was fantastic really wow wow then after you finally got your move outside Sweden you went yeah. to greece yeah how was the life in greece and like the football in greece compared to advanced country sweden it's tough and what is like thinking about them still it's tough individual you have to like you have to do it every day in training it doesn't matter how good you are in games or what you have done in games you have to do it every day in training so that you arm the bib for the game the next day or the next weekend it doesn't matter how many goals you score this weekend you still have to put it in team that I'm the one that's supposed to play it's not like Sweden when you score like five six goals you don't want to play the whole season the other competition is really open and uh, that's the thing that I like because when I was in Sweden um, it feel like it's some point that it doesn't matter how much you play how much you do or how, much, how less you do there are like some Teams that you can play uh, five, ten games, and you sit on the bench five, ten games, and so on, all that. But when I came to this, it was like a whole different kind of competition. You have to work hard every day, both in training and both in games for you to play. And uh, it's really good. The life outside football is fantastic. Every day it feels like a vacation because the weather is good. Uh, the fans are crazy, are crazy about football and that's wow. up for the team. But at the same time, if things are not going well, you you have to put, you have to like step up your game every day for you to perform well. So when I came to this, I'm not playing hacking for like uh, I was not starting playing hacking, so I was like disappointed. So I decided to pass uh, with them and move to some place I can have a chance to play or so I can do at least. And I came to this as well. It was a uh, woman and strike and the other was like. scoring every game he was scoring every other game he was good in everything and he was scoring every game so when i came there i met the coach the coach told me that yeah i see the heck that here you have to like take your game at your own next level and perform for you to play so i was on the bench but every time i came in i scored so the coach was like deciding he said okay i need to play both of you and at the end of the day i was the one that and both play and um, it went so good I, i've never been um, in a top form in my career like for in greece so it's wow. good actually wow wow and in greece just like you said it was totally different like uh, the football was different how enjoyable was the country and the weather like was it a good weather how was the language side like the food etc 
I can say everything is good. Everything is good. The only thing you have to do when you're going to race, if you're planning on vacation to race, you have to you have to just prepare your uh, swimming clothes as so if you can swim. <laughs> I don't yeah, I don't <laughs> swim. I don't know how to swim. <laughs> Me neither. But uh, it was great. It was great. I love it. I love it in Greece as well because first of all, it gives me a memory of football that I'll never forget. As well, it gives me a memory of football. But uh, most of all, the memory that I get from football it was like great, and uh, everything was like so nice. Everything was well planned. Uh, the training and the games and everything was like so good and all that. And I met some like teammates here. I was like. Wow, wow. You also played for Hecken in Sweden before yeah. moving to Greece. Like you said, in Hecken, you did not play much and um, mm -hmm. you scored a couple goals. Yeah. How was like living in Gothenburg and playing for Hecken? How was it like compared to Oribro? Or Ico because Hekin do play good football. Did you enjoy the football side, even though he did not get playing time? I think yeah. I, in the beginning, with the first two coaches I played, like when I came to Hekin, uh, I met John Dia. I was been extremely well, very good player, very good person as well. He did extremely well. He do he like fantastic things in Amsterdam that like everyone uh, could remember. I mean, first of all, no one think about it. He did it like. Uh, the second half of the season, when when I came, that's when he started to score goals actually, and uh, he did things that people didn't think about. But yeah, uh, and then I came to Hecken and he moved to China, and uh, as well I came to Hecken, he was playing and I was coming in, I was doing my thing, he was doing his thing, and when he leave as well, uh, I start to score goals. I start like I think I score six goals in twelve games, and I get injured. That's when I get injured again. So because that season was I was playing with Fana, we was playing like fantastic football in Hecken. We have Storia, Nikit Storia, who was mm -hmm. uh, was playing fantastic football as well. And uh, the first half of the season I scored like uh, six goals in twelve games and we went to break. And then when we come back from the break, I get injured and I was out for like six months. And when I came back uh, we had a new coach that had a, a new uh, philosophy, new way of playing and all that. And suddenly I did not fit in that uh, philosophy and the system and way of playing. So I had to, of course, because for me, I need to play. So I was like, talk to them that I, I have to play. I need to find a way to play. So we passed away. Wow, wow, wow. It seems like you've been through a whole lot of injuries. Right, please um, tell us and uh, also guide the young footballers or every footballer. How do you manage to overcome your injuries? Um, I think some of the things that uh, some injury you can't you can't afford because I can say some injuries you can't avoid it. Uh, some injury you can muscle injuries and all this joint injury and like I said like my injury I was like, like I can't do anything about it because I did not get a kick I did not get it's nothing to the ball I just get like a sudden hold in my ball that I could not do anything about and when I went to this as well I jumped I landed and my athletic end up, end up right in my leg off my leg wow. it was crazy and uh, those are the things that see, I can't do anything about. But the thing that I can do about is like being professional and uh, try to do everything I can control, try to eat good, sleep good, do my recovery, take care of my body, both in and out, and uh, listen to my body as well, and do everything that I can control. And the rest of the things you can't control, having less sleep time, having bad pitch, or having coach that's blah, 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 all this. So that's the thing that I can just advise to other players, all the young players. The things that you can control, that's the thing that you should pay all the time. When I was in Greece, I, I get injured. I was asked for two years, and the doctor said, oh, we cannot do the operation, but you're not going to play football. You're going to do the operation, so you can continue walking normally, not even play football, or not even running. You can walk normal. 
Let any doctor say, of course, you're a doctor, but I'm not a football player. It's my job. That's my job to play football. But I'm going to play football and play football again. And you're going to continue working with your doctor. And I'm going to continue to play football. And I did it to myself to do it again. And today I'm here to play football. Wow. A doctor told you you could not play football? Not even after. One year. Yeah, even when in Sweden, in the UK, came back to Sweden, yeah, doctors and physical therapy that told me, yeah, you can't play football. Uh, this is the kind of injury that you can't recover from. So, of course, you're doing your job, and I'm going to do my job again. And when I do my job, I'm going to enjoy it. I do the rehab every day. Sometimes I train like three times a day, and uh, it gets boring. And of course, like I said again, it opened a new opportunities for me to learn a new different things, uh, things that I could not even imagine me uh, learning today. And, uh, it makes me understand what are the priorities, how important and less important football can be. Wow, wow, wow. You've come a long way and you've overcome a whole lot of barriers with injuries, even doctor telling you you can't play football anymore. And here you are, just like you said, you've worked so hard and um, you're giving advice to every footballer to work hard during his rehab and there's always a chance to come back doing what you love what is the best goal you've scored in your career like if you look back in oribro in uh Hecken, in greece in Boden, in Ico, like what's the best goal you think you've scored or the best goals you've scored um for me, when I'm gonna like describe a goal, I'm not describing with the with the quality of the goal because for me that's all I I can say I can describe a goal with the feeling and the feeling that I had is the way I describe how good the goal could be. So um, when I was say like, when I was taking mm -hmm. I was not playing at all and all that and I moved to Greece. And when I started to play again, I scored against Olympiacos. I was on the bench. And uh, suddenly I came in um, and I just get the ball and just scored the goal. And it feels like fantastic that finally I've done it and I've started to do something I love again and I do it with happiness. And for me, that's my best goal because that's the thing that describes how it was and how it feels. So whenever I think about this goal, it just makes me feel. Okay. Wow. Wow. Somebody just asked, um, God got me 20. Ask, please. Ask him how was his first time playing pro? How was it like? Bro, <laughs> my first time was like, I came from Sierra Leone, you know. Um, I went to put in the I was just like with shorts and t shirt because I felt like. It's the same way that from Sierra Leone and Sweden, you know. So I came with just short and t-shirt with my backpack. Wow. <laughs> you know, every, you know what people talk about <laughs> about the north. You know how how cold it gets, how it can get. Mm -hmm. Everyone I went away from the uh, out from the airplane, I was the last to go out. So I say mm -hmm. hi to the, I say hi bye to the people that uh, stand on the plane. So then I went out. When I went out from the the, the flight. The wind that blows towards me, I ran inside the flight. <laughs> I, I thought I was like going into a fuser. <laughs> wow. So it was like, yeah, like, it was many, many challenges. But like I said, like when you have it, your head like playing football and mm. nothing, it was it fits good actually. Um, but like I said, it was tough. And there are many, many challenges both in the pitch and outside the pitch. Bro, credit to every single player out here playing in Sweden is so of cool. It's crazy. <laughs> even course. like the Swedish players, like they cannot even handle it at some point. Like it's so crazy. Uh, so crazy to everyone. I'm sure there's like other countries that are colder than Sweden, but just like you said, if you you're coming from Africa or a place that is not as cold as Sweden, then you yeah. taste different. Yeah. Or especially you live up up north, then that's another issue. Yeah. When it's, it's different, different, it's a different kind of adaptation. That's why I have more like I said, like players that come from Africa, like come directly to 
can maybe or somebody that is mm. called like get like one week of trial. It's impossible. You can't. Wow. It's not possible. And that was like for me, just so unfair to come like directly to Scandinavia or some part of Europe that is called and do a trial if you're from Africa or a place that, that mm. is warmer than Sweden or Scandinavia and get just one week of trial. It's impossible for you to show your family because the only thing you focus on how to like get rid of the, the cold in your fingers and your lips or your mm-hmm. toes mm-hmm. and all that. It's, it's, a, it's a bit challenging, but yeah, like you said, I tell it to people that went through that difficulty. Yeah, I know. Um, who is your African icon of all time? I don't tell, bro. Really? Yeah, for me, like I said, I, I don't want cook for football because uh, for, for me, football is just something I do because I do because I enjoy playing football. Mm-hmm. But I don't enjoy watching football. I enjoy watching other people play football as well, but I don't sound like an actor. For me, my, I'm my example. I walk and I make my goal and I follow my goal. And that, for me, it makes it much more easier for me to like go where I want to be because I don't want to start to compare myself with someone that is here, someone that is there. I make my goal and I walk through my goal. But like, do you have African football player you look up to? Maybe let's say uh, George Ria, Eto, Kalon, like all these, these no top goal. players. Oh, okay. No. Okay, that's interesting. And how is the love life like? Are you single, married, like <laughs> struggling? <laughs> Life is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually very personal. That's the thing that I would like to talk about. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm married. I've been married now. Uh, I'm married. I've been married since uh, 2019. And I've been together with my wife now for uh, 10 years now. So it's, it's been cool. Wow. Good, 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 good. What sort of music are you into? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <more>. It depends on <laughs> mood because uh, I actually love music. I actually love to dance. I don't know how to mm. dance, but I just love to dance. And uh, like, I get easy to activate. I activate myself very easily, especially with music. And uh, music gives a whole different kind of thing for me. Before game, being mm. home, I listen to every music, everything. Everything that you can think about, it depends on my mood. Wow, wow. Uh, who is the toughest defender you faced in your career? <sighs> it's actually, uh, it's actually very, very simple for me. Uh, when I was in Boden, I have played against my whole career. I actually played against many, many defenders, many good, many quality, many tough, and so forth. The most toughest defender I've played against uh, consciously is uh, one player that played. I was I played against him when I was in Boden, and he played in VCD, and he, he played in Hammarby as well when I was in mm. AIK or when I came to Sweden. But yeah, uh, it was David Feldman. David Feldman. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. He used to play for yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's tough. So he's the only centre back that could push you off the ball because yes, <laughs> yes. wow, 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 wow. And who, what player you've played with that you feel like is one of the best out there? I feel like I've played, I've played with many good players in my career, but um, I'm talking about like they have played with like two players. One of them like uh, stopped now, but the other have just like stopped. And one of them was uh, Marcos Pode. That was when I scored 14 games in 14, uh, 14 goals in 14 games when I was in Uruguay. Mm. And he did like 13 assists for me by then. So for me, he was one of like the best I played with. And the other is uh, Dana, Daniel Hernandez, that played in Haiti. And mm-hmm. he's a promising player. And I think he will go somewhere that. Will not even imagine because he's good quality and he will make a very, very good quality in his future as well. Wow, wow, wow. Nice, nice. Um, thank you very much for giving us up your time. We really appreciate it. 
before you leave, uh, please, what's your advice to young footballers out there, footballers out there, and like, um, what do you think footballers should do when they are free or what can they add to their life? Uh, for me, it's like very simple, you know, everyone comes from different cultural backgrounds, so just play football and enjoy it, you know, and don't make football as well. the identity a football club. You can go there, but at the same time, you can be here. So when you're here, make sure you do things that make you happy or sensible to prepare for when you're there, because anything can happen. When you're there, you build a foundation, but when you're here, everything is good, but when you get what that make you happy and enjoy it, and that's the most important thing. Play football for yourself, don't make football competition for someone or so. Enjoy football and just be happy. Thank you very much. Uh, guys, um, if you are not following my um, talk show page, it's Telly Talk Show, and you can follow my main page, which is uh, Telly Shays. This is where all the interviews is uh, done and um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tele Talk Show, and all the full videos will be up there. Crespo, how did you get that? That's the last question I have for you. How did you get Crespo? Because it seems like here in Sweden, when you, before somebody will find you, yeah. who you are, the only name they have to mention is Crespo. Everybody knows you as Crespo in yeah. Sweden. If you mention Alas and Kamara, I don't think many people who know who you are. Yeah. So where did you get Crespo from? How did it yeah. come about? I tell you the second names are uh, very, very common, like Kamara, Bangura, Koma, and everyone is picking like a nickname. And by then when I was in Sierra, my brother took Crespo from Alan Crespo from the other time. And mm -hmm. uh, my brother was like very, very good at winning on football and Sierra Leone. And then, then I just, when I was growing up, he was big Crespo and I was on Crespo. And that's how it came come up. Wow. 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 Um, you just moved to, to Vinamo. Yeah. Um, what's the expectation? The expectation is simple for me. Just let to be in the league and play football. That's my uh, expectation like uh, outside but like internally I have my own expectation for myself that I've always like faith for myself and also have to work on it personally for me to like at the end of the day maybe in November we sit here again I'll tell you what I was expecting for myself. Thank you very much Alassan Christ Thank you. Kamara, for coming on Tele Talk Show. We wish you all the best this season and hopefully you can uh, get Vinamo back to Advanska. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you.